Welcome everyone to POB's town hall meeting. Today, we are honored and pleased to have the National Library Services for the Blind and um, physic Physically Handicapped Deputy Director, Mr. Jason Yasner, who will be telling us about the program, about the updates and all that is happening um, at NLS. Before we start, I would like to give you a small briefing about Mr. Yasner. He is the deputy director of NLS. He was appointed in July 2018 and has served in multiple leadership positions at the Library of Congress since 1994. So I guess you are the institutional memory. <laughs> he is responsible for the day-to-day -day management and oversight of all financial acquisition, human capital, and IT activities of NLS. He provides a wide range of analytical, technical, managerial, and advisory functions, and is currently leading the NLS Modernization Initiative. Before joining NLS, he served most notably as the acting director of scholarly and educational programs in the National and International Outreach Service Unit, and as the World Digital Library Operations Manager. Um, thank you, Mr. Yasner, for joining us today. I will mute everyone um, after Mr. Yasner finishes his presentation. We will have enough time for Q and A. Ben. You muted me by mistake too. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, good, you can okay. hear me. Yes. Um, thank you, Tara, and thank you all of you. Um, good morning, my name is Jason Yasner. I'm the deputy director of the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled. We did change our name. We Sorry. used to be physically handicapped and we thought that that name wasn't appropriate. Mm -hmm. So we changed our name back in 2019. To, to the blind and print disabled. Print disabled was language uh, that we actually found in the Marrakesh Treaty. Uh, and we felt that that was a good quote unquote umbrella term to describe um, most of our patrons uh, of NLS. NLS is located at the Library of Congress. Uh, which is where I am right now. I'm in the Adams Building down on Capitol Hill. And I am really, really pleased to be able to speak with you today and the invitation um, for this town hall. Um, I've been very impressed by what I've learned about the Prevention of Blindness Society of Metropolitan Washington. Uh, according to what I found, you began in 1936. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, NLS started in 1931, so you know we're we're right next to each other. Back in the 1930s, hopefully, um, uh, I was born many many years after that. But uh, I applaud our um, our predecessors for thinking about such important um, services, such as the Prevention of Blindness Society um, and NLS. And so, what I was thinking about doing. Uh, I was going to give you a little bit more about me and about what I do, but thank you to Tara for those very, very charming and flattering um, words. Um, uh, and then I'm just What's gonna that? Go, and then I'm just going to go through NLS. Uh, yeah, I'm um, going. Um, yeah, the NFB NLS. convention. Oh, are you going too? Oh, we'll chat afterwards. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, you're. Someone is speaking. It's in Orlando. That's where I'm going next week. Okay, I okay, I just muted someone, so now it's just me. Hopefully you can just hear me. Um, okay, so my name is Jason Yazer. As I said, I've been at the Library of Congress for 30 years this October, which is hard to believe since I'm only 35 years old, as you can if you can see me. Um, I started in the public affairs office uh, working on publications uh, and then moved to IT support. And I was in the IT department at the Library of Congress for 16 years, mainly dealing with end user support. And I think that that gave me a particular um, expertise with what people need. IT folks tend to be 
very technical and not really thinking about the way people, regular people like you and I use the tools that they provide. And so I found it very, very enlightening to learn and work with end users at the Library of Congress on how they used equipment, how they use systems, how they use tools. And I think that prepared me as a leader moving forward to eventually become deputy director um, here at NLS. Um, I became deputy director in July 2018 uh, after serving in multiple leadership roles here at the Library of Congress. And I have to say that in my 30 years here at the Library of Congress, this has been the most rewarding and the best role that I have played. Certainly something where I wake up in the morning and I feel like I am doing good in the world. I am helping people. I'm helping people to read. Um, it's just a wonderful mission. And our vision statement at NLS is that all may read. You know, no one can refute that. One thing that's great about NLS as part of the federal government is we get praise and support from everybody on the right side, on the left side, the House, the Senate. Everyone loves this program because it really is a wonderful example of what federal government can do when it's trying to help its citizens. And so let me tell you a little bit about NLS in case you don't know already. I'm hoping that most of you are already patrons and you're hearing this for the hundredth time. But anyway... NLS provides a free library service for individuals who cannot read or handle standard print materials, allowing these users access to audiobooks and braille reading materials. So our individuals, um, our patrons, don't have to be blind. Anybody who can benefit from either braille or from an audiobook um, is eligible for our service. Many of these individuals that use the program um, have low vision. They're not blind. They have low vision. Um, large print materials, audio materials, perfect for someone with low vision that maybe doesn't know Braille. Maybe they lost their vision because of an accident or because of age. And Braille is, is not really an option for them. NLS is for you. Um, anybody who has difficulty holding a book or turning a page, anybody with um, a reading disability such as dyslexia, um, someone who has a temporary um, brain injury or accident or something like that. These are all potential patrons for the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled. And we're really, really proud of that. Um, the Library of Congress has actually been serving blind, eater, blind readers as far back as the late 1800s through its Reading Room for the Blind. And that was at the Jefferson Building on Capitol Hill. If you've ever visited the Library of Congress, most of you would have visited the Jefferson Building, which is the museum type building. Anyway, we had a reading room for the blind in the 1800s. Uh, NLS was actually created in 1931 to provide braille books for blind adults and was intended to extend that service to eligible readers outside of Washington, D.C., and serve the large number of World War I veterans that had lost their vision in combat. So in 1931, NLS was formed. It had a slightly different name back then, and it was mainly to serve Braille books for blind American adults. Over time, this legislation um, that created NLS was amended uh, to extend service to blind children, people with physical disabilities and reading disabilities, and provide other items than just books. And one important fact here is NLS is yeah. the reason that okay sorry i'm listening to the the, the rachel, rachel, that's rachel, why I'm not hearing you when you're saying rachel that. rachel please mute yourself rachel yeah i muted muted her for for her thank you um and let's distribute the very first audiobooks which we call talking books in 1934 and these books were distributed on long play records, LP records, the 12-inch records that probably all of you still have uh, in your houses. 
Uh, these the records used new technology in that these records played at 33 and a third revolutions per minute, which was considerably slower than the commercially produced 78 RPM records of the day, thus allowing additional sound to be recorded on one side. The new LP record was patented solely for the use of the blind. In fact, this was printed on all of our talking books. It would be more than a decade before the first LP was produced commercially and became the standard for music albums. So back in 1934, NLS basically created the LP record as the first talking book. Eventually, that became the main medium for commercially produced music. So really interesting fact. We still have a huge collection of vinyl LPs. Um, that's basically for historical purposes, since most of those have already been digitized, but really, really cool to know. And the machine that we sent out, because we also send out um, players, uh, talking book players. The first talking book player, of course, was a turntable, a vinyl LP record turntable. And we would send those out to Americans that qualified for the program. So you can imagine the postman bringing a large turntable to your house and you getting LP records and you listening to books and reading just like anybody else would. Really, really fascinating. The cool thing is that since 1931, we've made a lot of improvements. We've really leveraged advances, advancements in technology um, to the advantage of our patrons because we wanted to make sure that we, NLS, were meeting patrons where they wanted to read, what they wanted to read, and how they wanted to read. So our current talking book player, which is about 13 or 14 years old right now, is a digital talking player device that uses flash media, like a USB drive. Um, our books are put on that USB drive and on a cartridge, and that cartridge goes into the digital talking book player, which we call the DTBM. And I hope that most of you are familiar with that. It's a very, very rugged machine uh, that thankfully can survive um, drops <laughs> Uh, from several feet uh, without breaking or mis, uh, malfunctioning. Uh, and this has been very, very helpful for our patrons um, who want to listen to audiobooks and don't have their own iPhone, don't have their own iPad, or maybe they don't even have uh, broadband connectivity to use our mobile app and our BARD service, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So the digital talking book player, very, very popular. So how does NLS service work? So the program is not just here in Washington, D.C. at my headquarters at the Library of Congress. The program is administered through an extensive network of cooperating libraries located throughout the United States and its territories. And these libraries directly serve our patrons. NLS produces content in both audio and braille. And for our audio content, we have narrators on staff who work out of our studios in Washington, D.C. We have a media lab, a recording studio here. We contract with other studios to produce audiobooks, and increasingly we've been able to acquire commercial audio that we then use as a base for um, accessible content. So that was a huge break for us to make these agreements with commercial audio publishers so that we get their audiobooks um, and we turn them into NLS talking books by adding additional accessibility features. Um, uh, the production of Braille, of course, that's huge with us, uh, even though we know that most of our, our patrons are, are, are not necessarily blind and Braille readers, more low vision folks like yourself. Uh, and so, but we do have a very, very robust Braille program. Um, and we partner, besides the cooperating network, which I'll talk about a little in more detail, we partner with the U.S. Postal Service. So the U.S. Postal Service, before NLS was created, sometime, I think it was in the 1890s, created what they call Free Matter for the Blind. And this is a first-class postal service that allows folks to transport reading material for the blind um, um, at subsidy. I'm not going to say free because the federal government does subsidize the United States Postal Service for this. So it's not free, but it's free for the patron. It's free for the for the um, the sender of the material and the recipient of the material. And so we rely on free matter for the blind to send our braille, to send cartridges, to send equipment, et cetera, et cetera, around the United States and its territories. 
And so that's most of our patrons use the digital talking book machine, receive their books and magazines on cartridge and receive them via the mail and work with their network libraries in their particular states. We also have a download service that deliver the, that delivers our content um, digitally, uh, and that's called BARD, and that's the Braille and Audio Reading Download Service, B-A-R-D, BARD. Hopefully you're all familiar with that. This is a very, very popular mobile app that allows books and magazines in audio and digital Braille formats to be downloaded to personal computers or to most personal smart devices, such as an iPhone or an iPad or an Android device. Um, or a refreshable Braille display. We have a whole Braille e-reader program that we send out, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. BARD allows our users to get any materials they want when they want them, and we're proud to say that it is the most widely used mobile application at the Library of Congress. The library produces several mobile applications for various services. BARD is by far the most popular. People who use it tend to love it because it basically makes reading as easy as possible. You don't have to wait for anything. You don't have to wait for cartridges in the mail. You go to the BARD mobile app, you search for the content you want, you download it, and then you read it on your time, your schedule, your convenience. So let's talk about the content a little bit. So NLS is essentially a large public library for those patrons who can't possibly make it to their own public library or a public library that's not providing content in an accessible format. So our catalog includes tens of thousands of titles ranging from the latest bestsellers to much loved classics. We have partnerships with a number of large publishers that provide us with their audio titles, which we convert to accessible content for our patrons. As you can imagine, our primary goal at NLS is accessibility. So even with this commercial audio materials, we do put a lot of work into enhance that content with things like easy to use navigation, narration of reader guides, and added content that would not be included in the commercial audio book. So we get materials from these commercial uh, publishers and we put it through the NLS accessibility process to add value, uh, searchability, and accessibility um, for our patrons. Our narrators on site are also able to produce accessible versions of books that commercial publishers would never attempt. These include things like cookbooks and books that are extensively illustrated or complex guidebooks. Most publishers are not going to make an accessible version of a cookbook. NLS will, because we know that that is something that is wanted, desired, and needed by our patrons. We take that on ourselves. We've even produced graphic novels where complicated scripts were written in order to describe each illustrated panel. So descriptive media all the time. Another way that we've added books to our collection is through the United States involvement with the Marrakesh Treaty. Not familiar. Uh, I, I don't know whether how familiar you are with the Marrakesh Treaty, but this was a huge treaty uh, that was done many, many years ago. The United States signed on as a signatory in 2019. This treaty allows participating countries to share accessible materials across national borders, allowing our patrons to access materials in multiple international languages. In addition, we are able to get English language materials from countries like the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, et cetera. We have added thousands of titles and NLS is the largest depositing country in the world, meaning we, NLS, the United States, share more items than anyone else in the Marrakesh Treaty system. To learn more about this, we do have an international language quarterly uh, publication. And I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, we have a very, very robust website and I want you to write this down and I'll put it in the chat later as well. Um, loc.gov slash NLS, LOC for Library of Congress, dot GOV for government, slash NLS for National Library Service. Our website is very robust. I'll talk about it a little more in a bit, but you're going to find a lot of resources there, all the information you can imagine about NLS and how to sign up. And if I'm sure you know someone who could benefit from this service, please pass it along. When I do these talks, I tell people, all of you who are listening, you become ambassadors for NLS. You become ambassadors to share the word because I know you know someone who could benefit from this service. So please go to our website, loc.gov NLS. So besides books, 
Um, we provide many other things. Readers can get a large selection of magazines in audio and braille formats, including The New Yorker, Cooking Light, Golf Digest, and National Geographic, just to name a few. NLS also has the largest collection of accessible music materials in the world. We are of our own music section. And this collection includes instructional materials, musical scores, and other resources. We have reference librarians that produce informational publications on any number of topics that are useful to people with low vision, including employment, accessible technology, sources of accessible materials, recreation, and travel. So if you're interested in how to uh, obtain a passport, uh, how to file your taxes, et cetera, et cetera, NLS may have a resource guide or, or a resource for you. We also work with the Bureau of Engraving and Printing on the distribution of the currency reader, which is called the iBill. This is a, a small device, a digital device uh, that is provided for free by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which is part of the U.S. Treasury Department. And we partner with them so that our network libraries and our patrons can have access to the iBill device. Small little device that you can hold in your pocket. You put U.S. currency, paper currency in the slot. You press a button and this device will tell you, is this a $1 bill, $5 bill, $10 bill, $20 bill, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very helpful. I actually tried to stump it when I first got one. I like $2 bills. I collect them. So I had a $2 bill in my wallet and I put it in the machine and I said to the guy, I said, there's no way it's going to know. It knew it was a $2 bill. I was very impressed. You don't see $2 bills very much. And then I also, I had recently been to uh, the United Kingdom. So I had some, some pound notes. So I had a five pound note. I put that in and it said error. So it does recognize U.S. currency. It does know when it's not U.S. currency and it understands the $2 bill. So anyway, this is just another one of these wonderful services that's available for free for our patrons, the currency reader. Um, so let's talk about our network. So as I said, it's not just about NLS here in Washington, D.C., the headquarters. The only way this program works is because we have cooperating agreements with network libraries all over the United States and its territories. The staff at NLS are very proud of this service we provide to our patrons and are very committed to the work we do, both in promoting accessibility and literacy. We do not work on this alone. I mentioned the extensive network of cooperating libraries. The majority of direct service to our patrons is provided through this network of roughly 100 libraries around the United States and in the US territories. So if there's a patron, let's say in Oklahoma, they're not necessarily interacting with NLS here in Washington, DC. They're interacting with their closest network library in Oklahoma. That's providing the service. That's providing reader advisory services, reference librarians, services. If they're getting a, a digital talking book machine, they get it from the Oklahoma library. They're getting their content, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the only way this works. This, this is a decentralized system that was put in place in 1931. Cooperative agreements between the federal government and state government. Probably something we couldn't pull off today in this climate of political insanity. But this is something that has survived and thrived since 1931. So we're very, very proud of it. And we have wonderful relationships with the network libraries all over the country. We provide guidance and resources and materials for them. And they're the ones that do most of the direct patron service. Um, every state has at least one NLS library. These libraries, in some cases, are part of a large public library system. Others are independent or educational entities, like our network library in Los Angeles, that's at the Braille Institute, and our network library in Massachusetts, which is at the Perkins School for the Blind, which happens to be the alma mater of both Helen Keller and her teacher, Ann Sullivan. So let's talk about who is eligible for NLS. NLS serves anyone who has a permanent or temporary disability that leaves them unable to read or unable to use standard printed material. This, of course, includes people who are blind or low vision, but also many others. The quickest way to get enrolled is to call our, one, our 888 number, 188-NLS-READ. Once again, 888-NLS-READ, R-E-A-D, which in numerical is 888-657-7323, 
Callers to our toll-free number are connected to their local cooperating library. So you say into the system, I'm from Pennsylvania. It will ask you probably your zip code, and then it'll connect you to your closest network library. They will help with enrollment, ask or answer any questions about eligibility, and can share additional information about services. One of the great things about NLS is that we are a library service, not just an audiobook provider. We have librarians across the country who can help you and NLS readers explore our collection and find materials that are interesting to you and NLS readers. Um, I mentioned our website before, loc.gov slash NLS. You can also find information request forms on our website. When someone completes that form, the request will go to the local library and they will contact you or the potential NLS patron. We've tried to make the process as easy as possible and we're continuing to improve that process moving forward. So let's talk about some of the cool new things that are going on. As I said, we've been leveraging technology. I mentioned we have a digital talking book machine. I've mentioned that we have a mobile app and a website called BARD, B-A-R-D, Braille Audio Reading Download. We're also looking at new technologies such as an Amazon Alexa skill, which is a smart speaker app. Tests are continuing for an Alexa skill that will allow patrons to access BART through their Amazon smart device. The next step will be beta testing, which we will be launching later in the fall. So you can imagine having a smart speaker and doing all of your reading and all of your searching and all of your verification via voice. Wouldn't that be wonderful for our patrons that may not be able to navigate a mobile device? If everything is voice activated, Maybe that's going to help out some of our patrons. So we're going into a big open beta test. Um, we tried working with Google on this. They were a little reluctant. So right now we only have an Amazon Alexa skill that we're working on. Uh, that seems to be the largest market share in the United States. Most people do. If they have a smart speaker, it tends to be an Amazon Alexa. So we're really, really excited about that. We also have another BARD um, um, application called Bard Express. This is a Windows PC application. And so this is the way that you can use a Windows PC application to access Bard, find what you need, download the files to your computer, and then listen from there. So Bard Amazon Speaker Skill and Bard Express. Both of them Oh, Bard Express has only been, it's been available for years. We're improving it, but the Bard Alexa skill will be available later in the fall for an open beta. Um, we also do really cool programs, at least cool according to me. Uh, we have a summer reading program. We launched our inaugural one last year. We know that many libraries around the country do summer reading. Um, we are really excited about this. It's our second one, and it kicks off this week. It's designed for readers of all ages. So on our website, you'll be able to find um, a link for our summer reading program for 2024. I encourage you, um, especially if you can't have kids, most of our most kids um, in our program participate in it. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of diverse programs uh, for summer reading this year. I keep mentioning our website. We just launched a uh, fully updated website. Once again, loc.gov slash NLS. The website provides a wealth of information on new materials, news and updates, patron programs, events, easy access to BARD, our catalog. And if you can't find what you're looking for, we also have an Ask a Librarian click at the bottom. And that's very popular in libraries. The Library of Congress um, manages and maintains an Ask a Librarian um, uh, service. We have internships. We have a specific internship called the Erica C. Vaughn's NLS Aspiring Leaders in Internship Programs. Uh, it was established in 2020 to provide legally blind individuals opportunities to work at NLS in areas of study or interest. If you know someone uh, who qualifies for that, we have information on our website for that. This is wonderful. Um, expenses are paid uh, by this program, and it's named after Erica Vons, who was the uh, former administrative officer here at NLS, who passed away in 2023. The program runs for 10 weeks during the summer. We currently enroll undergraduate and graduate students, uh, those who have graduated within the past five years, uh, who have an accredited two-year or four-year college or university are um, eligible to apply. So just another kind of cool opportunity to work with NLS and take advantage of our, our programs. 
Um, another great program we have, and this is managed by the patron engagement section. We have a patron engagement section at NLS, which reaches out to people like you. Uh, there's a listserv that you can sign up for so you can find out what cool programs are coming up as part of the patron engagement listserv. Um, uh, to sign up for this, I'm going to give you an email address that you can send to them and say, I would like to sign up for the patron announce listserv. That email address is NLSPES. NLSP as in Paul, E as in Edward, S as in Sam. PES, which stands for Patron Engagement Section, at LOC.gov. So NLSPES at LOC.gov. One of the things we do uh, that PES does is our patron webinar series. NLS hosts two different live webinar series and is preparing to start a third. The Many Faces of BARD is held monthly for patrons looking to get the most out of BARD. Similarly, our quarterly patron corner webinar highlights a different aspect uh, of NLS service every quarter. Uh, this summer, our third series about the NLS Burrow e-readers were launched. All the webinar sessions attendees have the opportunity to ask questions directly to our NLS experts. So if you're interested in NLS products and being part of our patron family, please write NLSPS at LOC.gov and you will be signed up uh, for our announce, uh, patron announced listserv. Um, we're also multilingual. I mentioned the Marrakesh uh, Treaty before where we get international um, content, uh, but we're also very aware that there are many Spanish language speakers in the United States. We have a Spanish language website. We have a lot of our resources, especially enrollment and things like that in Spanish as well. And of course, the wealth of Spanish language materials that we get here in the United States and through the Marrakesh Treaty. The Spanish language website is the same as the NLS website that I mentioned, only there's a slash ES for Espanol at the end. So that would be LOC dot gov slash nls slash es and that will be our spanish language website so how do we get our content um mainly we work with um collection development librarians here at nls but also with the network librarians out there in the united states and its territories uh we've always been very interested to hear from patrons you know what do you want to read and patrons would communicate with their network library with their reader advisors and say i'm very interested in this i want to see more westerns i want to see more science fiction etc cetera, etc cetera. well now we have actually opened that up to patrons directly we have a patron title request service so while patrons have always been able to request new titles to be added to our collection through their network libraries we've empowered our readers to request titles online right from the NLS catalog page. So patrons need only navigate to nlscatalog.loc.gov. Once again, nlscatalog.loc.gov, where they will find the option to suggest a title for addition in our collection. We've already seen great enthusiasm for this new feature. And I think this is another great way that NLS connects directly with his patrons. Once again, I come from kind of an end user support background. We need to know what you want and what you need and how you how you want it delivered to you and how you want to read. This is a perfect example of you giving us direct feedback. Um, I mentioned the digital talking book machine. It's been in service for about 13, 14 years now, but we're working on an updated version of that, which we call the DA2. Um, the DA2 is the newest version of NLS's purpose-made digital audio player. Uh, it's currently in production. Uh, we just finalized the specs for it and we'll be ordering it en masse uh, starting this year. The DA2 includes a number of features, including internet connectivity, which will allow users to connect to BARD, to download materials and save those materials on internal storage and to, to connect to Bluetooth peripherals. So while our current digital talking book machine does not have any network connectivity, you get your books on, an, on a cartridge, you plug the cartridge in, you press play. The DA2 will actually have a Wi-Fi modem into it, which will allow you to connect to a Wi-Fi network, connect to BARD with your credentials, and download materials directly to the device. Um, prototypes of the DA2 are displayed at consumer events in 2024. As you probably know, NLS sets up at many, many different exhibits and conferences and conventions around the country. And we always try to have our, our cool devices on the table for you to, you to play with. 
Over the next several months, we'll be building inventory and training network libraries in the final iteration of the device, with units rolling out the libraries in probably early 2025. Um, Braille on demand. I'm just checking the time. It's 1136. I want to give plenty of time for um, uh, for questions. So we do have a lot of Braille readers uh, in our um, in our program, and we know that hard copy Braille can be very very expensive to produce. Can be very bulky. Uh, and we know that uh, a regular regular size paperback book uh, for a sighted person uh, would be multi, multi volumes uh, in Braille. And so to try to save money and to try to save space, instead of printing every single title in Braille, whether people want it or not, we started a Braille on demand program in June 2022. And this allows patrons to request any Braille book available on BARD in hard copy Braille format for long-term use for NLS patrons. The initiative significantly expands our hard copy Braille offerings and enhances usage by providing patrons with their own copy of titles like cookbooks, how-to books, craft guides, and much loved craft classics that readers want to refer to again and again. Reception of the program has been incredible. More than 17,000 volumes are in the hands of patrons thanks to this exciting program. So go to our website if you're interested on Braille on demand. It certainly saves space instead of printing hundreds of copies of every single title and storing them in a warehouse. Now we have things on, de on, on demand. And the final thing I'd like to talk to you about is our Braille e-reader program. And so this is something we've been working on for many, many years. We had to put together a proposal to send to Congress to get them to approve and to um, give us the money to purchase these. So NLS recent, recently launched its Braille e-reader program, which is a refreshable Braille display. The rollout of our Braille e-readers is now complete. All 50 states have received their devices and local network libraries are now trained to support patrons receiving the devices. Patron feedback has been very positive. So if you're familiar with refreshable Braille displays, they tend to be very, very expensive. We have contracted with two different vendors, Humanware and ZoomX to produce two different e-reader devices. These devices are free to NLS patrons. Some of these devices in the commercial market are over $1,000, probably out of the price range for many of our patrons. We provide these devices for free. So if you're an NLS patron, you work with your local network library and the network library will provide you an NLS Braille e-reader, which has been very, very popular, both devices. And this is a way for you to build your digital Braille library. You can have tens of thousands of titles downloaded to this refreshable Braille display and carry that around with you in your pocket, as opposed to having thousands and thousands of Braille title, hard copy Braille titles that you probably don't have room for in your house and probably can't transport. The refreshable Braille display is another way to take your reading on, on the go and is another way that we have tried to meet patrons um, where they want to read, how they want to read, and when they want to read. So I know I threw out a lot of stuff, and I know this is being recorded, and I'll provide some notes uh, to Tara afterwards. But I wanted to give you a really good kind of high-level overview of what NLS does. Um, we have a very, very supportive uh, and devoted staff. Uh, as I said, our mission is, is unassailable, our vision statement that all may read. Uh, and you can see I'm very, very enthusiastic about this. And so I love going out. I love speaking to people. In fact, next week I'm traveling down to Florida for the ACB conference. Um, uh, American Council on the, of, of the Blind, uh, where I'll, I'm one of the keynote speakers, where I'll be addressing the crowd. I tend to go to these conferences every year. And so this is just a wonderful opportunity to address all of you um, at the Preventive Blindness of Society. So with that, I'll pass it back to Tara. And if there are any questions, uh, I would be happy to take them and hopefully I can answer them. Mr. Yasner, thank you very much for this thorough and informative presentation. Um, I'm sure we all appreciate that. I've had so many questions and you have answered many of them. Good. And thanks and thanks to the NLS program, we have our POB book club, which meets every two months and it's called POB Reads. And all our books are barred books so we can all enjoy. Love it. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs>
And whoever wants to sign up, it's pobreads.org. Um, now, um, to unmute yourselves, if you are on a PC, it's Alt-A. On a Mac, it's Shift-Command-A. If you are on your tablet or iPhone, smartphone, you have the mic in the lower part on the left. You can unmute yourselves. Um, so anyone who has a question or any comment, you're I see a nice that. comment in the chat right now from um, Mr. Lawrence Bass. Very great presentation. Such a wonderful bevy of resources. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. As you, say, as you can see, uh, I hope it comes through how enthusiastic I am. Um, I really, it really does. love this program. Um, the Library of Congress does amazing, amazing work, but this is really like the peacock feather. This is the Librarian of Congress, Dr. Carla Hayden. She adores this program because this is exactly what the Library of Congress um, um, should be doing. We do fantastic work, but you know, NLS very, very close to my heart. And I can't see myself moving on to any other position before I retire, because I really, really do enjoy coming to work every day, waking up. Um, once again, our website is chock full of information. You know, you may not think of a question now. You may ask a question that I can't answer for whatever reason, but please always use the NLS web, uh, website as a resource for you. Until someone asks a question, actually, I have a question. Sure. I saw on your website that um, NLS is also recording some international language books in addition to Spanish. Um, could you elaborate more on, on that and which languages are included? That's a very good question. So as I mentioned, um, we are part of the Marrakesh Treaty and we have actually contributed more than any other uh, organization. Um, and so what that means is patrons um, that would non-American patrons who have a similar need that our patrons do all over the world have access uh, to our entire catalog, which I think is amazing. You know, I, I'm not a big believer in, in, in political borders, especially when it comes to reading and, and information exchange and things like that. So it was wonderful that the United States finally signed on to that. Um, uh, Spanish, of course, is, is one of the, you know, the largest um, languages that's part of our um, uh, part of our collection because there are so many language speakers, um, uh, Spanish language speakers uh, here in the United States. So of course uh, that is something we um, something we we try to always um, we always try to provide as much in Spanish uh, and try to have as much parity as possible, especially with our reference materials. What I'm doing while I'm talking, which is why I'm stumbling a little bit, is I'm trying to open our latest. Um, um, our latest monthly report, because I wanted to give you some stats uh, on what Marrakesh is. So um, let's see, in in fiscal year 23, which ended September 30th, 2023, um, we had received almost 3,000 titles from Marrakesh. Um, these languages include... Um, well, let's see. Downloads uh, are from Argentina, Australia, Austria, Bangladesh, Belgium, Canada, Estonia, Finland. It just goes on and on and on. Pretty much any language you can think of um, from a country that's participating in the Marrakesh Treaty is represented there. Now, of course, we want to build up as much as possible. One thing that we're really taking on these days um, um, is reaching out to tribal libraries. So tribal libraries here in the United States are not affiliated usually with the state library. Therefore, they're not necessarily the patrons that live uh, on reservations. Um, it's not as easy for them to become NLS patrons. So, so now we're making concerted outreach uh, to tribal libraries to see um, the amount of uh, potential patrons uh, that could benefit from NLS service and how best to get um, not just um, give them access to our current catalog, but their tribal libraries. You know, there, there's so much material in tribal libraries that have to do with specific trials, uh, tribes um, that are in the specific uh, Native American languages. Uh, we want that as part of our catalog. We want to make sure um, that any American citizen that's eligible for this program uh, has the reading material that they want. And so, um, 
I would definitely suggest going to our catalog. Once again, nlscatalog.loc.gov. You can search by language there and you'll see that um, we're um, every day we're gaining more and more foreign language, or I should say part, international language materials. Great, thank you. Um, Jane, did you want to say something? <laughs> well, there's lots I could say, but uh, Director Yesner has covered everything and it was so informative. Um, I just want to say I've been using talking books since they had that great big record and that humongous record player. Uh, and uh, they were such an important part of my life at a time when you're very down and don't know where to go and what to do when you're losing vision. So uh, anyone who is even thinking about that, uh, when you're overwhelmed with other things, this is such an important getaway uh, to be able to listen and read books like everybody else. And also the other thing is that to reinforce what he said that people who, um, you don't have to be blind to be uh, eligible to use the service. And uh, I have had friends with MS and other kinds of issues, or even a friend is doing um, a <coughs> rehab, rehab is in a rehab center and has had several, a number of veterans uh, using the talking book service. And so uh, anyone that you know who fits any of those criteria uh, should definitely uh, move on and look this up and, and get the forms and things to apply or call that 800 number. That was great to know. That was a shortcut. Thank you so much, Director Yasner. It's been so informative. This is Thank music you. to my ears, everything you said. You know, I didn't mention we have specific outreach to the Veterans Administration, uh, to the Blind Veterans Administration. Um, exactly. I mean, most of our patrons are not blind. Uh, most of our patrons have low vision. Most of our patrons have some sort of injury or some sort of reading disability or things like that. And so, you know, I know what we have blind in our name, uh, but we need, we, NLS, we, you know, we all need to do a better job with awareness. I think that we could be serving millions of American citizens if there were better awareness. And oh. um, there are different services out there. You know, I, we have no problem if you want to use Audible or Libby or Bookshare. I mean, we encourage that. We just don't want you to say, oh, well, NLS doesn't have um, any material I want. Uh, NLS is um, service uh, systems or tools are too difficult to use. You know, if, if I'm getting that kind of feedback, then I need to do a better job. Um, but um, I'm really, really happy to hear your your words. Thank you. I mean, I I do this for for all of you, and it, it's it's just a wonderful feeling. Thank you, um, Tara. The, there are yeah. a couple a couple <laughs> comments and questions in the chat that, that I'd be happy to please happy to take. Okay. Um, once this excellent review, I think the programs touched so many people and improved their lives. Please keep it up. Absolutely. As I said before. <laughs> Thank God we've got Republicans, Democrats, House, Senate. They all love this program. It's probably the only one thing they can all agree on. And so I'm really, really happy. They're, they're very supportive. They're very generous with their annual budgets to us. And they always love to hear about, you know, the great stories that I hear from all of you. Um, and we pass them on. We pass them on to the representatives and the senators and say, you know, the money that you give us is really, really being spent well. It's a great use of taxpayer money, you know, to help American citizens. Um, one question, yeah. will the DA2 player offer non-connected use as well as connected? For yes, sure. absolutely. You do not need to connect. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi modem in there in case you... Um, are able to use that, but it still works just the same as the original digital talking book player. You can get cartridges <coughs> and you can listen to everything um, via the cartridges. So we do know that a lot of people uh, out there, especially uh, our patrons, may not have access to broadband, may not be able to afford broadband, you know, and uh, and so we need to make sure that there is uh, there is a way for our patrons to read and um, and uh, have access to content that does not involve digital delivery, such as digital download. That's right. um, Sandy? Yes, um, this yeah. is Sandy. I, I also want to compliment you on a very, very uh, inclusive description of the Talking Books program. I've been a user like Jane since the large 
uh, 33 RPM <clears throat> build bulky machines. And I, I, I compliment the NLS program for embracing technology as it changes. And I'm very excited to hear about the um, talking book player that will be Wi-Fi connected. Um, just uh, uh, the things I learned that are very important to me are you're reaching out to the tribal libraries. I'll share that with my daughter who works with a lot of um, tribal communities because she knows about the talking book program through me, but she may not be aware of that new wrinkle. And I, um, just a quick question. You do um, have magazines recorded and I realize newspapers might be too much of a challenge because they're so daily, but it just, I want to verify, do you or don't you record any newspapers? That's a very good question. We actually have a contract with the National Federation of the Blind, uh, NFB, on their newsline service. Uh, I'm not sure whether everyone knows about that. Um, new, we actually have a contract with them, a five-year contract. Every five years, we renew the contract with them. And they're the ones that actually produce and provide newspapers and magazines um, for NLS patrons. Um, I would definitely reach out to NFB and Newsline. Um, it's accessible. They have an Amazon Alexa skill. Um, I believe they have a website. It's also accessible via telephone. Um, very, very, um, very, very important service for us since we don't have the internal resources to produce newspapers, as you said. And so we, we contract that out. But we're definitely working on trying to have like more magazine. The sad thing about the magazine world is so many magazines are going out of business mm -hmm. because, you know, producing like uh, producing a print periodical is just not a, a, a cost effective um, mm -hmm. business these days. And so, you know, we feel bad when, you know, people are asking us for different magazines and they don't understand why they're not getting them anymore. And we have to tell them, well, the publisher went on a business or, or, or they discontinued this magazine. What breaks my heart is I'm a cat person. And we used to have like four or five different cat magazines at NLS. And I think we're down to like one or two, you know, and that absolutely breaks my heart because I can't get enough cat magazines. But then again, that's just me. Alex, I think it's Alex Stein. Alex, you are unmuted if you have a question. Maybe not. Um, Barb, Barb Seek. There, there, there's another question in, in the chat I was going to answer. Okay. It says here, can we request books in other languages even if not listed? How do you decide what to get via the treaty? Very good question. You can request whatever you want. We will do our best to get it. As far as the treaty, you know, we, the only books that are part of the exchange program are the ones that are actually shared by the um, cooperating entities. So not every country has signed up for the Marrakesh Treaty. Many have, and many have shared a huge amount of um, content. Others have shared only a handful. So the sad thing is if it's not there already, um, we can try to get it, we can reach out. But I absolutely encourage you, request whatever you're looking for, regardless of the language, and we will do our best. I see a woman, I, uh, iPad 6, Alex Stein, you're waving your hand. <clears throat> yes, I, I am. I had, um, actually it's my husband's name. But about the one with the problem is me, Marlem. <clears throat> I have too many, many questions, but I will never, I will never um, finish asking you those. My point right now is to let you know that I am very thankful, and I am. Ah, oh, I just cannot express how helpful you are to us, to all of us with this problem. And um, and you gave us a lot of hope. So thank you very much for your hope and namaste. Thank namaste. you. Namaste. Thank Th you, Mario. Th thank you so much. In the chat, uh, besides the website that I've repeated 15 times, I've also put my, my address, my email address. 
uh, I encourage you, you know, feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have any questions or suggestions or feedback or anything. I'm more than happy, um, more than happy to hear from you. That I said, this is exactly what I love to do. Really, really talk to the people that use the service. So. And if you have any questions or you need any more information, you know, to call our hotline and we can provide you with the information Mr. Asner gave us today. And our number is 301-951-4444. We can give you this information as well. Anything else? Any other questions? I guess. I think people are getting hungry and want lunch. <laughs> I know lunch I do. Time. Okay. We don't want to keep you longer, Mr. Asner, and we really appreciate <laughs> okay. everything for today. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Mr. Asner, for this excellent presentation. Thank it's you. my pleasure. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Namaste. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.